What is up YouTube? Once again, another fishing video where I am not actually fishing. It is, um, y'all, it's just been a pretty rough winter for the South. I know a lot of you guys that watch my YouTube channel are probably from up north and you're probably laughing at me right now. You can see it has definitely snowed quite a bit. It is so cold right now. I live in South Carolina and it very, very rarely snows, um, but it has come down pretty hard this morning for South Carolina. You guys that live in the Northeast don't give me a hard time about our inch and a half, two inches of snow, but we had enough snow to make a snowman today. Got out in the yard and played with uh, my little boy and everything. And uh, we're just trying to keep the morale up at this point. We're definitely ready to get out there and get started. But uh, just another day or two before we get to get out there. He's leaning a little bit. My man is definitely, he's, he's tired. I'm in the giving spirit today. And for anybody that comments on this particular video, I am going to give you Stanley Croc, a vacuum crock. This is an awesome little tool. You guys that make soup, vegetable soup, stuff like that on cold days like today. Um, this thing will keep your soup warm for about a year. You can warm your soup up. It'll stay warm all the way through the summer. It'll go all the way until about Christmas time 2018. Your soup will still be hot. And this Stanley vacuum crock. You can trust me on that. We got to get inside, and I'm doing something a little different this year. I'm trying to take it a little extra step in my preparedness this year, and I'm actually going to cook a lot of my meals before I even leave. That way, I can literally eat, sleep, and fish. So, you guys know there's my camper right there. Everything's pretty much ready to go. That's going to be my home for the next. 14, 16 days right there. You know, honestly, going into um, the 2018 season, this would be my third season on tour. Um, anticipation is pretty high, you know. Um, I wanted to do this for a long time and just to have the opportunity to uh, to even get out there and try is a big deal for me. Uh, but I'm looking, I'm looking to really, really prove a lot to myself this year. Um, you know, last year was one of those years that I, I kind of expected to have really, honestly, in my in my first year of fishing. Just a lot of things just kind of broke the wrong way. It's, for you guys out there that tournament fish a lot, you know how it is. It's, it's, if you really want to be honest with yourself, a lot of times there's this very, very small line between fishing, finishing really well in a tournament and then Kind of feeling like it was a missed opportunity and i had a lot of those tournaments this year that um or this last year that they really felt like missed opportunities you know the tour season i think it sets up to a lot of my strengths this year quite honestly we've got some uh some events that really really line up into what a lot of the things that i like to do so i'm looking forward to getting out there and getting the season started of course we start off in florida and we have two events in florida this year and quite honestly, Florida has been an Achilles heel of mine. I have not really 
had any strong tournaments in Florida. Fishing the coast events for several, um, you know, a lot of years. We always started off at Okeechobee. And I think the best finish I've ever had at Okeechobee has been in the 40s. But, uh, you know, I'm fishing two tour events there. Uh, fishing Okeechobee and then we're going to the Bass Open on Toho followed up with the Harris Chain. So I have three events in Florida and I'm really honestly liking my chances down there this year. I like fishing in Florida but it's always been traditionally tough on me. But I'm looking looking to get down there and um, and get busy this year to be honest with you. Go straight from Okeechobee to Toho back to back events. I've never done that before. Start off in February, um, go right off to, to Harris Chain. Those three events most likely will be centered around bedding bass or spawning bass. So get a lot of experience there. That's always been events that I've done very well in or has been spawning type events. I actually never fished Lanier before, but I've been there and it does look and set up a lot like the lakes that I'm used to fishing. Of course, it has the blueback herring. It has um, the clear water, the deep water, and it, we're going right in probably the prime prime season. Good pre-spawn should be fishing should be good there at Lanier. You know, honestly, March is just a good time of the year to be on the water. I don't care where you are in the country. We're sitting around the spawn, pre-spawn, depending on the year. It could be post-spawn. You just never know. Um, so. March is just a good time. March and April, that's my favorite times to be on the water. And just that fact alone just makes uh, makes me really excited about that Lanier tournament. As soon as we leave Lanier, we'll head straight up to, uh, to Cumberland, and that's a place I've been to before, and I really like. That is one of the biggest fisheries that I have ever fished in my entire life. And I like the way it sets up. It's a, it's a river, but it's a real big river. It fishes really big, it's got big small mouth in it and that was one of the tournaments last year my sophomore season I feel like I kind of let that one get away from me so I'm definitely know what to expect this time I know what areas to target I feel like and I see that tournament working out just as well as I see the rest of them working out quite honestly all three species spotted bass all four Quite honestly, spotted bass, mean mouth, small mouth, and large mouth. You'll be able to fish for whatever, however you want to do it. When I mean, you fish at Cumberland, which is a place that, if there's two on the schedule that I, I should know what to do, it should be Lewis Smith and Lake Lanier for certain. Uh, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I should know what to do when I get to Lewis Smith, even though I've never seen it. It's, it's got to set up just like these lakes fish here at home. It's deep, water's clear, there's spotted bass and there's largemouth in there. And most of my life that's what I've spent fishing on. So I think that's a place that really should set up really well for me. Um, I think the weights are going to be good, the fishing is going to be good, and it's April. I mean it's April, it really doesn't matter if it's cold, hot, or indifferent. Most likely the fish are going to be biting and guys are going to be catching fish. It's just up to me to make sure that I fish to my strengths and that I do very well there. You know, going into May, uh, that's when fishing seems to always get a little tougher for everybody no matter where you are. I have two events back to back weeks again in May. One is the Bass Open on Lake Norman, uh, which is a place that I, I have once again, it's sort of like Lanier. I've seen Lake Norman. I've fished it a couple of hours, but I can't say I truly know much about it. I do know there's spotted bass and largemouth bass in there. I'll probably spend a little bit of time on there. You know, the, the bass opens are triple A events, but I take them very seriously. There's a classic berth on the line at those events, and a classic is a tournament that I feel like changes the angler's entire career. So even though the opens are probably not as prestigious as the FLW Tour. I take those events just as serious and if I've got time to go to Lake Norman and just take a look around and get a better feel for how those fish work, move, bite, and what they eat there, I'm definitely going to take take my time to do that because making a classic could definitely change my life for sure. 
As soon as I leave Norman, I'll, I'll head straight to Kentucky Lake. And Kentucky Lake is going to be good. We're going there about the third week in May, um, second or third week in May. I'm hoping the water's high and in the bushes. I want to stay in the bushes and kind of get in there and, and do my thing. You know, last year, my, my freshman year on, on the FLW Tour, my rookie season, I fished uh, Kentucky Lake, saw it for the first time, and probably one of the most triumphant tournaments that I've ever had in my life. I have never cast a check on a ledge fishery during the ledge time of the year where fish are offshore. And that was one of the tournaments where I was able to, uh, to put together a good school of, of fish on the ledges, find them with my graph and my electronics, and go back and catch them. I'm very familiar with fishing for fish deep, but the way the fish set up on the Tennessee uh, Valley Authority is totally different. Smallmouth fishing has been something that has almost made me love fishing all over again. Small there, we'll go to St. Clair in June, and that is going to be probably one of the highlights of the year. It doesn't matter what the weather does when we get to St. Clair in June. It doesn't matter if the wind blows 20 or 30, as long as they don't cancel the event, guys are going to catch fish. And smallmouth fishing is, is starting to become one of the things that I, I love to do the most. I always fish the northern opens just to get some experience fishing up north because I didn't grow up fishing up there. And matter of fact, I never caught a keeper smallmouth until I was in my 30s. And fishing up north, and those places, St. Clair, Champlain, all of those places up north, they're a ton of fun. And if you haven't been there, you definitely should go. But I'm looking forward to getting up there, getting my spinning rods out and doing exactly what I know how to do here at home and catch some big smallmouth to finish up and hopefully make that forest wood cup, make my first forest wood cup here. I really appreciate you guys following. I hope you'll continue to follow. I'm actually gonna vlog the entire season, so You'll be able to see some of my fishing journeys. You'll be able to see here behind the scenes, hanging out with buddies, going out to eat, driving on the road, getting gas, everything that I do, you'll be able to see what happens. So stay tuned, stay in touch. I appreciate you guys taking the time to follow my journey on the FLW Tour in 2018.